So it's Tottenham Hotspur, of whom so many big things are expected this season, who kick off the new season here at a stadium of light, which is absolutely buzzing for this first fixture of the new season. Bouncing straight back. They won the championship. In fact, they've only lost one league game in 2007. Kieran Richardson getting involved early on. And Dwight York, you can see him patrolling that central midfield area. This is McShane, the new signing from West Bromwich Albion. Didier Zakora for Spurs. Tainio and Berbatov, who was probably the biggest hit of anybody among the new signings at this time last year. 23 goals he scored for Spurs in his first season with the club. Chimbonda's long ball. Berbatov got a little flick on it. Malbronk on this left-hand side. Still behind off a Sunderland head. Good play from Malbronk, good play from Berbatov. Knew exactly where his teammate was. So there lies the problem, Malbronk refused to go down the left. Good ball would be one touch and whipped it in behind the defenders or to whip it in behind them. Absolutely vital for these newly promoted clubs to get off to a solid start. Ginas with the corner here for Spurs. Berbatov got up but he was taking a ride. Game's not really settled yet. Genus. Sunderland won't mind that too much. No damage done early on. Malbronk. Tottenham yet to find their attacking rhythm. This is a good ball in. Berbatov just behind him. And then hit wide by Jermaine Genus. Oh, I don't think Roy Keane would like his team to be exposed. He probably doesn't want too frenetic a start. He knows that Spurs have the greater quality. Sunderland do throw lots of bodies forward. Here's Mark Brown going down the outside this time. Decent ball in. Three players beyond the ball. Berbatov can't control. It's a quarter up. And Genas in that midfield trying to orchestrate things for Tottenham. Here's Staltieri. Berbatov. Lovely cushion header down. Malbron chipped up towards the back post. Danger area. He was attacking. Oh, what a great ball from Malbron. Cuts inside, everybody knows he's probably going to do that. Another fine knockdown from Berbatov. Once he cuts it this time, doesn't waste any time. Roy Keane just doesn't gamble that. That ball just might miss Berbatov and go through. Always curling away from the striker. It's not an easy ball to deal with, but the goalkeeper's rooted. Ray Gordon decides that he's not going to come. Can Sunderland get at them? Chimbonda. It's Timo Tainio, the Finnish player. Oh, Berbatov here, again he pulled into the space. And Keane gives Craig Gordon his first save since he signed for Sunderland. Good link-up play, great ball from Tainio, as we expect. Fantastic touch from Berbatov. And that's Steve Malbronk. This time last year he was uh, very much on the outside of things at Fulham after a run-in with the then-manager there, Chris Coleman. Still making his way at Tottenham and looking to make the kind of impression he'd want. Staltieri and Keane working. Keane's ball back. Asks a lot of Staltieri. Bit too much. Nosworthy. No, just out muscle. Good, good play from the defender. Richardson lays it across to Ross Wallace. 22 year old left back. Can play left midfoot too. Comes up with a few goals. York picks out Stokes. Anthony Stokes again. A two hoop is in there. And he couldn't get the direction he wanted on his header. It was a bit behind him, the cross. There it was. And the Spurs defence, they didn't really pull out at all, didn't bring that line up. Uh, to be honest, didn't really have time. Not his fourth say to her, but it was half a chance. Murphy. Wallace. Bounces a long way, it's a chance here for Daryl Murphy! Saved 
by the goalkeeper, wonderful chance, Edwards plays it back in again and the chance has gone missing. Tottenham went to sleep for a moment, they were indebted to their goalkeeper there. Well, there wasn't a great cross, but the ball bounces awkwardly for Anthony Gardner. Can't head it, can't... Well, it's a poor first touch. Poor first touch from Anthony Stokes. If you guess that, I don't... It was Daryl Murphy. Sorry, the Murphy, chance. yet. There's the first... Well, the second touch is heavy. It was a decent enough first touch. Once that second one gets away from him, and Paul Robinson, well, he does well. England's number one smothers him. Nyron Nosworthy. It's uh, not a good ball. Steve Marbrunk can pick it up for Tottenham. And the flag has stayed down, it's Berbatov, goes past Gordon, the goal is empty, was Berbatov fouled there? No, not given. Alan Wiley, big decision. And a good one. Just lost his foot in Berbatov, he didn't really appeal, did well to get past Greg Gordon, but the defence just did enough to put him off. I thought he was actually going to take it first time once it bounced over the goalie. Wallace. Chimbonda loses out. Wallace nicked it away from him. Richardson drives the ball in. He's fallen here to Carlos Edwards. Now at 2 who? And it's gone wide. Otherwise, Sandon might have just sneaked ahead there. Well, we're just starting to get a real game. End-to-end -end action. Richardson again with a hopeful punt. Long way out. Good play from Edwards. Well, to, well you normally try and bend that left side of the goalkeeper. There's that pass from Albron. Just as he takes it over Craig Gordon, I thought he's going to play it first time there. Fan of his technique. Uh, they just do enough to put him off. He loses his footing. And it's a hopeful appeal for a penalty. It's a hopeful look at. Uh, he doesn't even look at Alan Wiley. Good decision. Dean Whitehead's challenge, by the way. Oh, we've finally got Berbatov. a game, haven't we? Yeah, and, and to be fair to Berbatov, he didn't make much of it, did he, either? No. Yeah, I, I thought he looked at Alan Wiley to be. He didn't even have a look, he knew. Just slipped. To look to make contact. A little bit of play by Daryl Murphy on that side. A good cover from Kabul. Just to confirm, there has been a yellow card for Didier Zakora. Just check what that was given for. Maybe a bit of dissent. Uh, it can only be. I can imagine it can only be for protesting about what he thought was a penalty. Look at Berbatov back in defence this time and helping to build an attack with Malbrock. Still got it, the Bulgarian. Berbatov scored over 20 goals in each of the last three seasons. Twice with Bayer Leverkusen and with Tottenham last year. Just to confirm, that was for dissent, as we suspected, Didier Zakora's yellow card. Only this guy could probably go past anybody today, Chimbonda. Made in towards Berbatov, but McShane was there to cut it out. Much appreciated by the Sandian supporters. That was Curlis and Chimbonda. Couldn't see the ball because he's had his back to it. Dwight York and he did well, McShane. There's a great ball in. Kabul, I think, who played it in. Fantastic cross. Nearly beat him first time. Refuses second time. And it's been a cautious start from both teams. Both teams really, I think, deliberate instructions, in particular from Sunderland. I think we're going to see more fireworks in the second half. Bit of a phony war. Dimitar Berbatov. Looked like he might open the scoring for Spurs. No penalty given after he'd gone round new goalkeeper Craig Gordon, but Sunderland had a big moment as well when Daryl Murphy had a chance blocked by the England goalkeeper Paul Robinson at the other end. Opening exchanges of the new season, no goals, and I think that Eppen is right. In the second half, I think you might see a bit more ambition from both of these clubs. They've given nothing away in this first half here at the Stadium of Light. Sunderland nil, Tottenham Hotspur nil at half-time. Daryl Murphy there, only cost £100,000. Gets us underway at the start of the second half. Back to the skipper, Dean Whitehead. A lot of the big clubs have been 
looking at him in the last couple of years. He's stayed at Sunderland so far. Liverpool were one of them at one stage. Oh, he's a good player. He's had a decent first half. But need lots of more, well, lots more positive performances, determined ones. And he's put in. Murphy as well, the centre half has played well for me. Malbron for Tottenham. Nosworthy and McShane have done a good job so far in keeping Berbatov and Keane quite keen. He's been playing pretty deep. Berbatov's been almost up there on his own a lot of the time. Tottenham haven't won a trophy, by the way, since 1999 when they won the League Cup. Anthony Stokes here. Good play. Murphy had got himself into a good position there. And uh, Chimponda is once again down with a knock. A uh, good interchange from Sunderland this time. Looking for the early cross. Chimponda struggling a bit. He injured himself a couple of minutes ago. Brightish start, second half from Sunderland. Carlos Edwards. Berbatov was back defending that time. Just as well, too, that ball was in swinging dangerously. Zakora. Good play from him. He's still going as well. They had to take him out in the end. Well, that'll be the first yellow, surely. Dean Whitehead goes in the book. Easy decision for Alan Wiley. As professional fouls, we don't really like to see him, but from a Sunderland point of view, that's a good foul. Are you sure York is only 35? Zakora goes to pass him, didn't he? <laughs> Still playing in the top flight, though. Did a good job for them last season when they were promoted. Here's the Tottenham ball in Jim Bond that was trying to climb for it, but uh, he's not that tall. Nosworthy chipping it forward towards Stokes, flags up. There's a good yard off. It's a late flag. Malbronk. Tanio, Malbronk again. Chimbonda joins in. Played towards the back post. And that one flashes wide from Robbie Keane. Oh, it was a great ball in from Chimbonda. Robbie Keane not noticed for a heading. He didn't really attack that ball as if he meant to head it. Just sort of hoped that it would reach him. Berbatov on the far post. That could have been a goal. He actually turns his head, Robbie Keane. Turns his body, comes off the side and goes well wide. There's probably everything to do with that. We need to improve in that area. Clean sheet so far today for both defences. Tottenham get a free kick. This is the kind of fixture, really, the Spurs have to win if they are going to be a top four club this season. Well, I believe so. It's amazing how sometimes just the, the opening fixture can almost define the way you play the whole season, particularly away from home. At home, the big clubs like Spurs and the ones who finished above them last season. Remember Liverpool putting in a really lacklustre performance at the Open Day last season against Sheffield United, because they had the Champions League qualifier a couple of days later, set the tone for their season. Certainly, Five, certainly yeah. domestically. Domestically. Chipped up into the danger, Eric Gardner had come forward, Tainio here around the edge of the box. Even Chimbonda forward. And it's uh, going to be a free kick here, dangerous for Tottenham, right on the edge, Berbatov will fancy this. Good play from Jim Bonda and Curlis from Nosworthy, where it's a clumsy challenge. Now, this might be the moment for Spurs. Nervy moments for the hordes of Sunderland supporters who are praying their side can emerge with something on this opening day. Let's hope they can understand that Scottish brogue, OK, those defenders. And Craig Gordon. Kabul, I know, strikes a mean ball. Does he? Yeah, I don't think he'd be given the opportunity, though, Berbatov. He was one of the Masters last season, dead ball situations. Yes, I think it's odds on Berbatov, isn't it? 
the ball is there, you're right. It is Berbatov and it is over. Harmless, really. Yeah, the early sighters. At this stage of the game when the goalkeeper's not been tested. I know if you give it to someone like Kabul or Genus and they smash it over and you say, well, you give it to Berbatov or Keane, they're more cultured players. Sunderland at times. Getting to the business end of this one now with, what is it, just over 16 minutes remaining. And out of these two sides turn one point into three in what's been a tight and, well, error-strewn game, really. Well, it's hardly a shot to save from either keeper. Shakur, is he a bit lucky to get away with this? I think so, I think he runs it a little bit too far to his left. It just doesn't really cut across him, can't get out of the way. Just a word for Ian Ross. Well, it's only 22 years of age. He's had a decent game on that left-hand side, and it's uh, interesting that it was Richardson they took off, not him. Dimitar Berbatov. Zakora. Sunderland getting almost everybody back behind the ball, as you'd expect in this situation. Everybody out there now knows that one error could decide this game, or, of course, one moment of inspiration. Stoltieri didn't really control that. Something can they build? Miller did well. Now then, Carlos Edwards. Again, to give the ball away cheaply. He's in a good position, Carlos Edwards. He just flicks it lazily with the outside of his foot. Doesn't really give Murphy the chance to get there first. Gardner nods in. Both these sides will be in action again in midweek. Sunderland go to Birmingham. Spurs at home to Everton on Tuesday night. Berbatov. Bent here. Takes on that chain. Berbatov once more. Oh, and they're looking for the penalty kick there. Zakora. And Whitehead once again. Now, Zakora was involved in an infamous incident last season where I think the TV replay showed he took a terrible dive against Portsmouth and won a penalty. And there, huh, Effen? No. This one's hit long towards Bent, who's got the other side of McShane here for a moment. I mean, the covering's good. McShane didn't really clear it, but Collins will get a chance to now. First mistake McShane has made all the all afternoon. This time's a bounce, and if uh, Darren Bent gets goal side of him, he recovers well. Didn't dive in, he didn't wrestle into the ground. That's just a different option. The Spurs have now got that more direct ball. Any mistimed clearance and misread and. The foul or Ben will be in on goal. Sunderland fans absolutely living every second. Of course, this time last year they were losing their first four games in the championship, and now Quinn was the manager. It all came to a, a head really when they went down at South End, who ended up getting relegated. You just couldn't see Sunderland being back in this league a year ago, but uh, the Roy Keane. Revolution with now Quinn as the chairman. That's exactly where they are, and they're holding their own here with Spurs on the opening day. Yeah, we were just thinking about stabilizing themselves in the championship, weren't we? A miserable August and early September they had. Jim Bond has kept it in. Ten minutes to go, the Sunderland stick or twist. Sakura puts it on into the melting pot. Nosworthy won the header, improved player, Naren Nosworthy, a right back when Sunderland were last in this league. I think I'll answer that for you, Doug. I think they should I think they should stick. No point gambling. Throwing themselves forward the last ten minutes. 
and losing what's been a promising start. Not adventurous, not exciting. Fans will be expecting a bit more, but as you know, that's a long, old, tough season. And happy landing for Younes Kapoor. Thoughtful-looking Martin Yol, who since he arrived at Spurs has spent £108 million. Pounds. Only Chelsea have spent more in that period. It's been a huge turnover in the playing staff at Spurs, hasn't it? That looks a bit like the ligaments, doesn't it? The way he landed on that there. Yeah, I don't think he was think he was trodden on by Murphy. And Leighton Baines as well, the left back, who chose Everton. There's some talk of Mido, isn't there, from Tottenham, coming to Sunderland, Lambert. Birmingham seem favourites to uh, reignite that particular deal at the moment. Aside here, Darren Bent. That was close, but Mary Flag Waver's in a good position to see it. Sees it correctly. Jim Bondo who can throw it long if he wants to. He doesn't. Looks like a far throw, a small stab. The corner. The corner with two minutes remaining. Two very underworked goalkeepers. The kind of work they don't want is to be picking the ball out of the net with just a couple of minutes to go. Gene has to play it in. Out it comes. Oh, and volley back by Huddleston. I think that was his first touch of the ball, and it was a sumptuous volley. Yeah, great technique, keeps his eye on the ball. Pressure by Carlos Edwards. Does it take a deflection? No, he just hits it with the inside of his foot, comes off it cleanly. And Gordon was relieved, that was straight at him, and not going for the roof in the corner somewhere. There'll be three minutes of added time, we're told. Well, it's an untypical... Barclays English Premiership game. First game of the season in particular. Wallace for Sunderland. Chips it forward. Wonderful chance at Tuhu! And it's saved by Robinson. Any firmer touch from Dixon at Tuhu and Sunderland surely would have pocketed the points. Well, there super was a save. Shot. Yeah, it was a super save. Goodness me. Tottenham. Just seemed to go to sleep there from that free kick. Well, they were. There was, there was nobody near him. He just drifted off. Didn't do anything fantastic with his movement. But yet again, he, yeah, he just comes off his knee where he just pokes a knee out at it. This is in the first half, I said. A more polished play in the final third. Would have got better contact with the header. A striker attacking midfielder. Surely that would have been, should have been 1 0. That was a massive chance for the former Preston and Norwich man. Here comes the corner kick. Away by Gardner. Tottenham having to just battle to hold on to their point here. As Murphy lays this one down. Towards Chukro, who's unable to bring it under control properly. Oh, what a great chance that was. That was the game there, surely. Collins just makes you wonder, doesn't it? That's how quickly... The whole thing could be decided. Murphy, he's done well there. Pulls that one back. Chopra was looking for something spectacular. That would have been worth waiting for, wouldn't it? Full 90 minutes. There's a red old tussle for possession. It's gone Sunderland's way. Well, he knows it as well, Tom Huddleston. Delayed in delay, should have played the ball. No point protesting about that one. Now then, are we set for a real sting in the tail? A Sunderland free kick. Liam Miller hovering over it. Dean Whitehead has a word. It's all down to you, son, you said, I think. Go for the far post. Liam Miller now into the wall. 
What a disappointment. The Sunderland fans there watched on expectantly, praying, hoping, wishing, but no. There's another. We've seen a succession of poor free kicks. Here's the one from Wallace. Doesn't really know what to do, Dixon Atuhu. Should I chest it? Should I take it on my knee? Diving header. Doesn't do either. Paul Robertson in the end. Well, it looks spectacular. Probably slightly easier than he made it, but make sure that he get, gets a big hand and pushes it well away. Whitehead. Chopra. Still might be something. Wallace again towards a two -hoo! And yes, Sunderland, they've got it. Michael Chopra, debut goal. Last kick of the game almost. And Sunderland are in dreamland. What a story this is. Roy Keane strikes again. Well, there's no point in me saying I don't believe it because I do believe it. Spurs have been punished, as I said. A bit of a lack of ambition, lack of width. There's great play on the far side. What a cool finish from the substitute, Michael Chopra. Fantastic first touch. Spurs don't get out to close him now. They're all ball watching. Gardner, Jim Bondi, they're ball watching. Genius is right in front of his goalkeeper and he slots it away. That's what he bought him for. That's what they paid the five million. He took a punch on Chopra. Look at Niall Quinn there, who scored a few himself. Of course, in the days when Sunderland were high flyers in the Premier League, finishing seventh a couple of times. It's all over, and in the most dramatic of circumstances, Michael Chopra has grabbed a winner for Sunderland right at the death. And there must be something about Roy Keane and Sunderland. They've got all three points. There were so few chances in the game. He had nil-nil written all over it.